One of the first major milestones in Kerbal Space Program is getting to orbit, and you won't be able to experience the rest of this masterpiece until you successfully do that. So today, we're going to take a look at how to do that. It takes a lot of skill and knowledge, but can be simplified down. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to need to know are keybinds. QWE and ASD are how you control your rocket. In this video, we're going to really only be using A and D for the most part, and that's going to tilt your ship to or away from the horizon, which is called pitching your ship. We're also going to be using W and S a little bit, and that's going to be forward and back. We'll be using those two keybinds. The other important ones to know are T, and that will enable SAS, which just helps your ship from spiraling out of control, and spacebar to stage your rocket. You're also going to want to take a look around the environment to make sure you know where everything is. The mission control center, the contract center, the vehicle assembly building and the launch pad, as well as the research and development center are the most important places to know about and remember. Once you've done that, I'm going to have you go ahead and take some early contracts and build a couple of practice rockets using the movement keys to travel off into the horizon. If you want, you can add a couple science instruments. Um, but just make sure you're completing the contracts. These early contracts will give us some of the money that we need later on to build our orbital rocket. First ship is just going to be a crew capsule, parachute, and a solid rocket booster, as well as some fins to keep it pointed in the right direction. One of the tips with this first rocket, because solid rocket boosters can't point in any direction, they can't control your ship, is that early on in the flight you're going to want to point towards the horizon or else the rocket is going to come down too fast and the parachute won't deploy. So that is an important tip with this first rocket. And with the science we've gained from this launch, we're going to go into the research center and buy some liquid fuel and a liquid rocket engine. And that will allow us to control the ship better and have a much more stable flight experience. So for this second rocket, it's going to be very similar. You're going to need a crew capsule, a parachute, and this time we're going to be using fuel, which you get here, and a liquid rocket engine, which you'll get here. We won't be using solid rocket boosters on this one. We're going to throw a couple fins on the bottom here and we'll be all set. So we're going to go ahead and take off. You can see that we've got a little bit better control of this vehicle. We're going to let it speed up to about 100 meters per second and then we're going to start to pitch over to the right and that's to the horizon. And that's just so that we don't come down too fast and that we know our parachutes are going to work. So between these two rocket launches, we're going to have enough science and money to upgrade the launch pad and get the research that we need to build a rocket that is capable of getting to orbit fairly easily. Now, let's move on to what we've been waiting for. Building an orbital rocket and getting to orbit. There are many designs, you can even pick some good ones up off of Steam, and if you'd like to skip the rocket design and building process, just search for them in the Steam Workshop and they will show up under save files. If you'd like to build your own, there are a couple of things we need to know first. Getting to orbit takes fuel. When we're talking about rockets, fuel is essentially measured in delta V, or change in velocity. To get to orbit, we're going to need well over 3000 delta V. The other piece of this puzzle is staging, or in what order the rocket does things. The easiest way to get high delta V is through multiple stage rockets. That's how rockets work in real life. There is a booster to get them out of the atmosphere, and then a second stage to get them into orbit. First thing we need to build is the crew capsule, which is just a capsule, parachute, and a decoupler. Then we make the upper stage, which connects to the decoupler. There are five of these T200 tanks, which you can copy and paste multiples of by holding Alt and clicking on the item you want to duplicate. Then complete the upper stage with a swivel engine and a decoupler, and you've completed the upper stage. Moving on to the booster, we're going to place another 5 T200 tanks. Then if we hold Alt and click on the top tank, we can actually copy the entire booster. And if we press X or Shift X, we can change the amount of copies we want to place in symmetry mode, and we're going to want to create two additional copies. We want to make sure these copies are placed perpendicular to the door, that way they won't change the way the rocket flies. Then for the engines, it's a Reliant engine in the center and a swivel engine on each of the side boosters. Add a couple of fins at the very bottom of the rocket to make it more stable and you're all set! There is one more thing we have to do and that is to check staging. That means choose when and how the rocket uses its parts. Counterintuitively, the bottom higher numbers are first, so stage 4 happens first and stage 0 happens last. The staging screen is on the right and if we hover over an icon we can see what part it is on the rocket. 
We want the booster engines to go first. Once the booster runs out of fuel, this decoupler will detach the booster. So that will be next. Then the second stage engine will fire. We will keep that engine on until we deorbit. Then, once we start heading back to Earth, we're going to ditch the upper stage with this decoupler and finally activate the parachute. Okay, now we can head out to the launch pad. Quick tip before we get started. F5 quick saves and F9 will reload the last save, even mid-flight. It's useful. Try it out. Once you're on the launch pad, turn on SAS and throttle up. Then press spacebar and activate the first stage and start the engine. Head straight up until you've hit about 100 meters per second and then start pitching to the right about 10 degrees. Once you've done that, keep the rocket pointed within the prograde marker, which is the circle with three lines. Prograde is just the direction a rocket is traveling in, so make sure to keep the rocket pointed prograde. Ideally, you'll keep your rocket pointed toward the bottom of the prograde marker. This is called a gravity turn and will slowly point you more towards the horizon. Getting to orbit is tricky. It isn't just about going straight up, because then you'd fall right back down. This is a tough thing to think about at first, but once you get up above 70 kilometers, you're going to need to go forward toward the horizon fast enough that when you get pulled down, you are past where the Earth would have been. This creates a giant circle known as an orbit. Okay, I know that was complex. What you need to know is that in order to stay in orbit, you have to travel towards the horizon very fast. So we're going to go upwards at a slight angle, and once we're out of the atmosphere, we're going to burn horizontally, and this will create a circular orbit. Once you think the top of the orbit is above 70 kilometers, you can throttle down and turn off the engine. Then, just wait until you get closer to the top of the orbit. Once you are getting toward the top of the orbit, known as the apoapsis, you're going to burn heavily towards the horizon. If you see the apoapsis moving, you're too far from the peak of the orbit, and you'll have to wait until you get closer. You can speed up or slow down time with the plus or minus keys. Just be careful, you can get going really quick doing this. So once you've gotten closer to apoapsis, try burning prograde. You want the sides of the orbit to become more circular, without moving the apoapse. Eventually, the apoapse will start moving, and if this happens, simply time warp until you get closer to the new top of the orbit. And burn prograde again. You might have to repeat this a couple of times. The point of doing this is to get the periapse, or the lowest point in the orbit, to be above 70 kilometers. Once you've done that, you've successfully gotten into orbit. This is the easy bit, deorbiting. Point your rocket retrograde, which in the nav ball is the circle with an X going through it, and this just means you're pointing backwards. Once you've pointed retrograde, you can press M to get to the map and move the camera so you've got a better view of the flight path. Once you've done that, just burn retrograde until you have a periapse that just touches the ground. A re-entry that is too steep can be dangerous. Once we have our descent worked out, we can stage, get rid of the upper part of the rocket, and stage again to enable the parachute. Now we just get to watch as the capsule softly touches down on the ground, and that's how you get your kerbals to orbit early and easily. Sometimes weird things happen and we still have trouble. Let's take a second look to go over some of the more common problems. The first one is that you've run out of fuel. This probably means the ascent was too vertical. As long as you have around 3800 delta V, you should be able to hit orbit. So when you are flying through the atmosphere, don't forget to start turning it around 100 meters per second, and then keep the rocket icon in the nav ball pushing towards the bottom of the prograde marker, and that's a much more fuel-efficient gravity turn. The second problem is that your rocket might start flipping over itself when you're flying, and this could be two things. If the rocket marker leaves the prograde marker, you will probably start tumbling, so be careful because there is a Goldilocks zone in a good gravity turn. If you are doing that though, and you're still tumbling, add a couple fins towards the bottom of the rocket, as far down as you can. This will make a much more stable rocket that's easier to fly. And the third tip is that you can't control the ship in orbit if you're time warping, so just push the comma key a couple times. That'll allow you to access your science experiments, turn your ship around, and accelerate or decelerate. Congratulations, you've made it to orbit. This is a huge accomplishment and a major milestone. And remember, orbit is just the first step. There are so many challenges to work towards, so many planets to see, and so much to learn. And there is a brilliant community of modders for Kerbal Space Program that have worked hard to develop ways to make the game more beautiful and expand it even more. Once you've played through for a while, check them out. And hey, if you like this video, check out these ones. We learn about a lot of sandbox and open world games, just like Kerbal Space Program. I think you'll really like it. And don't forget to give this video a like on your way out. Thank you for watching.